for folks that may be new to benpadoic acid, what's the difference between benpadoic acid and a statin in terms of the the mechanism? And are we seeing that people who are statin intolerant or are experiencing side effects with statins are better tolerating benpadoic acid? Yep, benpadoic acid is is pretty cool actually. The main side effect that really our patients complain about and that makes statins so difficult to prescribe are muscle related side effects. And presume you know, there's I'm sure Tom remembers Paul Thompson very well from all the the NLA meetings. But Paul taught Paul taught the world about statin associated muscle conditions by doing biopsies and all kinds of other. Uh, interventions to understand this. And the last time I heard him talk, he had narrowed it down to any one of 20 different mechanisms for how statins could potentially affect the muscles. So even though every doctor on television says it's CoQ10 deficiency, Paul has told us otherwise, that um, there are multiple potential mechanisms for how statins can affect the muscles. But the key is that the drug gets into the muscle and affects the cholesterol synthetic pathway inside the muscle. It's not from LDL lowering. And so benpadoic acid is a prodrug that you take by mouth that goes into the circulation, circulates everywhere, but it, because it's a prodrug, is only activated uh, and is only activated by an enzyme that's found in liver cells. It only gets turned on in the liver. And so inside the liver, it gets turned on and inhibits the cholesterol synthetic pathway in hepatocytes only. So it affects intrahepatic cholesterol affects LDL receptor expression by hepatocytes and lowers LDL cholesterol by a liver specific mechanism sparing the muscles. And um, so it's a it's another pathway. It's not very potent. So on average, you get about a 20% LDL cholesterol reduction and a, like a 15% ApoB reduction, but um, you don't get the hyperglycemia effect from statins and you don't get the muscle side effects from statins. By a quick little aside, I do know Paul Thomas. He's a lifelong friend, and I cannot take a statin. I actually peed myoglobin into my urine. We tore the statin. So uh, that's basically early rhabdo, and I recognized it and flushed my uh, uh, self with water and flushed it out right away. And every statin I took gave me severe muscle aches. But then I said, no, no big deal. I'll take ezetimibe. As a, and I got the exact same muscle aches with ezetimibe as I did with uh, the statins, although I didn't wait for myoglobin to show up in the urine. But I would always run into Paul at NLA meetings and AHA meetings and everything. So I actually went up to him. I said, Paul, what do you know about ezetimibe in myopathies and stuff? He goes, no, under no circumstances can that happen. And I said, but it happened to me. He goes, well, Tom, are you sure? There's a lot of things. Like, I go, it was identical to the stat. And then uh, two years later, I met him. He came up to me. He goes, Tom, you're right. We're seeing several reports of ezetimibe can cause my, not to the same extent as statins. So uh, you never know. But he is the master. Dan's right. So has, for that reason, has benpadoic acid become more and more popular? And why would someone, you know, who's, who's starting lipid lowering therapy for the first time, not just choose benpadoic acid over statins? Is this a, an accessibility issue? Is it cost? The, the niacin lesson and the CETP inhibitor lesson and the, the list goes on. The lidocaine lesson, Tom, you remember the lidocaine in the CCU? Uh, I killed a lot of people with lidocaine <laughs> and other antiarrhythmic drugs back in the 70s. We didn't know. Yeah. We, the thalidomide lesson. So we have we have numerous examples. Yeah. The tritaranol le lesson I just talked about. Yeah. Numerous examples of how drugs which make sense physiologically should benefit us and maybe even have some physiology biomarkers that suggest that they're beneficial until you have good, strong clinical trial evidence supporting their use should be reserved and maybe only brought out under special circumstances. A single cardiovascular outcome trial like clear outcomes is, is very, is, is very comforting and exciting because actually the, the benefits seem to be outsourced or exaggerated even more than you'd expect from simple LDL lowering, especially because the population was enriched with primary care patients. But one clinical trial versus over 30 cardiovascular outcome trials with statins, to me, 
is, is why when you look at like, well, what should I start with? Well, let's start with the class of drug that's been used in over 30 cardiovascular outcome trials that had positive outcomes. And, and we'll be more certain of the benefit. But that's not where I end up. That's just the starting point. And if need be, I'm happy to add the next drug. And um, most of my patients, it, it's not the sky's the limit. You're, the, the, the next thing that they say is, well, sure, I want the same level of evidence and I want all the same benefits and I want all the same tolerability. But doc, I also don't want to spend a bunch of money. So you, you take the drugs that they basically give away for free to start. And that is statin drugs and azetamide. Both of all of, you know, that those two classes are available as generic. And I, you know, my insurance company, I, I have zero copay for either of those. Most of my patients will say the same or it's very little. And if you can achieve what you want to achieve with statins and azetamide, I think everybody's quite pleased. I don't think there's any physiologic reason why a PCSK9 inhibitor or bempedoic acid is superior to them. Uh, the benefit is LDL lowering. So try to achieve what you can with the free drugs that have been around for 38 and 24 years, respectively. But when you do want to add a third drug, basically the cost of bempedoic acid rivals that of the uh, PCSK9 inhibitors. And if I have to pay 6000 a year for each of those, I'm going to take the one that lowers ApoB the most, which would be the PCSK9. So uh, at the price it's now sold at, bempedoic acid is not as widely used as one might expect. And it's, uh, I've been told, I don't uh, practice and write them anymore myself, but it's one of the hardest to get approved by a third-party payer, bempedoic acid. I recently ran my full labs through Function Health. And I have to say the results were eye-opening. Turns out my ApoB was higher than ideal, probably thanks to a little too much coconut yogurt. I also found out I was slightly low in copper, something that I would have never suspected without testing. On the flip side, my biological age came back 13.3 years younger than my actual age, a calculation based on the work of aging researcher, Dr. Morgan Levine. So all in all, I've got a few tweaks to make to optimize my lipids and nutrient status, but overall my blood work says I'm doing pretty well. That's what I love about function. You get access to over 160 biomarkers covering everything from hormones and inflammation to nutrients, toxins, cardiovascular risk, and more. And all your results are housed in one beautiful platform, all tracked over time. Once you get your results, you can make informed changes before small issues become big ones. To get started, head to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill. The first 1,000 people get a $100 credit toward their membership. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.